Hello and welcome back to Corzy's Travel and we're back in our kitchen and today's recipe is kind of fun because we're making a traditional Italian dish that doesn't use any tomatoes. So stay tuned, sit back, relax, we're going to make bolognese. Hello and welcome back to the newly revamped Travel with Cooking. Any recipe on this is 100% not mine. All the recipes are from this book, Tasting the World One Country at a Time by Nicole J. O'Donnell. And this book has over 200 recipes from 200 different countries. The whole point and premise behind this series is not necessarily to have you see the recipe, steal it and make it, but it's just to inspire you to maybe make, make a dish yourself or travel to that country because so much of traveling is tasting the food in the country or in the place that we're in. If you're inspired by this and you want to make these kind of recipes, why don't you pick up this cookbook instead? You could pick it up from your local bookstore or maybe even see if your library has it. If you want to check out some of the other recipes, there's a whole playlist of Travel With Cooking. And without further ado, let's get to today's recipe. Most of the ingredients for this were pretty standard from your supermarket, such as carrots, celery, and garlic. The one thing I will note is the pork spare ribs did have to be removed from the bone prior to cooking and shredded. And I have never done this before and this took more time than I realized. The other bit of prep you have to do is to combine your carrots, celery, and onion into a food processor and pulse until the veggies are finely grated. You will set this mixture aside for later. Never underestimate how long prep is going to take you. Getting that rib meat off the bone took a little bit of time and cutting all your veggies and pulsing it, that can take some time. We're going to start by melting some butter. And once your butter is melted, you're going to add your pancetta and let it cook for about five minutes. And next, you're going to add that veggie mixture of your celery, carrots, and onion and cook that on low. One thing I learned was that Traditional Italian bolognese does not contain tomatoes. And the reason for that is tomatoes were first brought to Italy from the New World long after Italians began eating pasta with sauce. Now while that's cooking off to this side, on my left, your right, I'm gonna get my Dutch oven out and I'm gonna start um, my other meat. So first I'll put a little bit of olive oil in my Dutch oven and I'm gonna add my garlic. And then you can let that saute for a few minutes. All right, next we're gonna add our, that wonderful rib meat that took forever to debone. Then you add some Italian sausage and cook both the rib meat and the Italian sausage. After about 15 minutes, you're gonna add your vegetable pancetta mixture to the Dutch oven. Some thyme. We're always trying to add thyme in this world, right? Some bay leaves. Don't say it, don't even think it, you are better than this. Move on. Next you're gonna add in your red wine, let that cook for a little bit, and then you're gonna add your broth. Now you're gonna turn your heat down to low, and you're gonna just let this simmer. It says for about two hours, but it's gonna be until uh, most of your liquid is cooked out. So now I'm gonna work on some sides. I'm gonna make some fresh garlic bread and then just a simple salad. You also have to cook your noodles separately, so that's something else I can do in this time. Let's get to it and let's maybe hear a little bit more about the country that we're cooking, the country of Italy. Bolognese is related to that of the French ragu, a stew of ingredients reduced to small pieces. And it comes from the city of Bologna, which is in the north of Italy. The city is often called a few things, such as the Red City, for its red tiled rooftops, the learned city because it's home to the oldest university in the world, and, well, the fat city for its rich cuisine. And this is something we noticed making the bolognese, it was quite greasy and filling. The earliest documented recipe comes from the late 18th century from Alberto Alvisi, who was the personal chef of later named Pope Pius VII. Now the bread was very simple, it just melted some butter and then brushed it on some pieces of bread and then added some garlic salt. And then put it in the oven until it was crispy. And the salad was something we do at home all the time. Just some spring mix, some sunflower seeds, Italian cheese flakes, and some bacon bits. Mix that in with a nice vinaigrette dressing. I also cooked our fettuccine noodles during this time. We use these because our son has an egg allergy and we know they're safe. I think next time I need to use a bigger pot. Wish you could be in this kitchen right now because every time I've opened this pot just to stir it just to make sure everything the smells are just incredible. We have a little bit of liquid left but now it's time to add our whole milk in. We stir that in and then we let that get all warmed up and cooked and we wait till there's very little liquid left. We're almost done. It's gonna be worth it. Everything is looking so good. I gotta be 
So thankful to my family for being patient. I started this way too late. It's time now to plate and enjoy the meal. I'll leave you with the final images of what the bread, the salad, the noodles, and the fabulous bolognese looks like. Thanks again for joining. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next time, enjoy your adventure.